What's up guys, how are you getting on? Today we are out measuring grass, myself and Nicole are here. We measure our grass with a plate meter. We walk across the field basically, we keep dropping the plate meter and the grass will lift up the plate and it will calculate the uh, off the height of the grass how much is there per hectare. So we usually walk the farm about at least once a week, maybe twice a week sometimes when we want more information. And we'll get uh, how much grass is on each paddock and how much the farm is growing. And it can help us to budget where we can afford to take out grass if there's too much grass there or we get, need to slow down the cows by feeding more meal or something if we're getting short on grass. We aim to graze between uh, a total cover of 2700 and 3100 so uh, in between there usually around 28 or 2900 that's uh, the total dry matter kilos of dry matter per hectare so in terms of how much is available for the grass then you basically minus 1500 off of those figures and that'll give you the kilos avail of, of dry matter per hectare that are available for the cows to eat because they can't eat everything obviously you got the bottom base of stem what's left over after the cows are finished which we call the residual when available cover then we aim to graze between uh, 1200 kilos per hectare and 1600 kilos of dry matter per hectare here, Loads of grass over here. So we can see on this field it's 30, 20. It means that there's about 1520 kilos of dry matter per hectare in the field uh, that's available to the cows. So this is, uh, this will be grazing this, uh, it's ready for grazing there now. We'll see according to the wedge when, what day they'll be going in, uh, depending on other paddocks. We seeded this field uh, back in 2019, August 2019. If you follow me on Instagram back then, you probably would have seen us reseeding. Grass is looking nice in it. It was mowed, pre-mowed earlier in the year. So when we look into the sward at how the grass is growing, we want to go in at three leaf stage. So if I pull up a bit of grass here, there's a small leaf here where it was grazed last time. This was the uh, first leaf then that grew out. So the grass would have used the energy in the stem and the roots to grow this leaf and then it would have used the energy that this leaf generated to grow this second leaf and now the two of these leaves together will grow a third leaf and put the energy back in the stem. And then when it grows to grow the fourth leaf, the first leaf will die off. So there'll only ever be three leaves at any stage. So we like to graze at the three leaf stage so you're getting most utilization. At this time of year, the clover is growing much stronger uh, towards the back end of the, or in late summer. You can see in these fields, here's a, lot of, a good bit of clover. The field we're heading up to now uh, has loads of clover in it. Clover is a different uh, grass species. It's a legume, uh, whereas our normal grass are a perennial ryegrass. So clover has uh, little nodules on its roots, which have a special type of bacteria in them called rhizobium bacteria and that bacteria pulls nitrogen from the atmosphere and converts it into usable nitrogen for the, for the grass plants in the soil to use up so uh, it's a kind of a, a natural way of, of using nitrogen in the sky so you don't have to uh, apply chemical nitrogen or you don't have to apply as much Clover is also really uh, palatable, cows really like it and it's really good for their milk solids. Very good with, with grass to help reduce your reliance on chemical fertilizers and to help boost your production a little bit. But with its growth, it doesn't grow as much in the spring, uh, which can have its challenges uh, that you won't have as much grass in spring, but it does grow more when grass growth reduces in the late summer, autumn. So it complements the grass growth at that stage. The biggest disadvantage to clover is that if cows consume a lot of it, they can get bloat. Uh, so we obviously don't want cows getting bloat. So you have to be important with how you manage your swords with high clover, that cows aren't going in very hungry and going around and just picking out all the clover before they eat the rest of the grass because it's tastier. 
and you can also apply uh, bloat oils and that to the water as a preventive measure as well. We have had not any trouble with bloat really in cows so uh, most of our paddocks aren't that high in clover, they're quite older swords and clover doesn't last as long as perennial ryegrass. So definitely something that's going to come into Irish farms a lot more, more clover in the sward so that we can reduce our reliance on chemical fertilizers. So a lot of our newer pastures have more clover in them all right but uh, we may have to over, we can over sow earlier in the year if you want to establish clover in existing swords. This paddock here we receded last, or last year, two years ago. So this paddock has receded two years ago as well. Cover of, 20, of 2,000 on it, which is about 500 kilos available to cow. So this is the paddock where the cows came out of yesterday. So that's what we're looking for. That's a good graze out, really happy with that. It's grazed right down, nice and low. There's very little residual left. So we would call this paddock 1500. That's the cover on it. So all the available grass has been taken off. The field it's probably less than 1500 whereas grey is really tight you might be talking maybe 1400 1450 where where there's dung pads obviously there's more so an average cover i would call this 1500 really grays out really well very happy with that you can actually start to see these little grasses you can kind of see them on camera a little bit kind of yellow that's the regrow it's already coming it's already starting to shoot there's good growth at the moment so even though they only came out of here uh, a day or a day and a half ago, the regrow is already started, it's already coming back in. So we're not really going to measure these with the plate meter because we can see with our eyes how much is on it. We know ourselves that we're confident that that's a 1500. Uh, the ground is kind of uneven so it, it would probably come up wrong on the plate meter anyway. So we're going to say that that's 1500 and this one they were in a little while before, a few days ago. And you can see it's a little bit darker, probably hard to see on camera. Uh, the regrowth is coming back, so we're going to call that 1700. So when we get back here to the office, we have our grass put into our wedge, so we enter all the figures. So this is kind of our demand line here. We have a few paddocks that are way up, so we might skip them and make bales. Uh, we were kind of uh, fighting away with the plate meter this week because we were wondering was it throwing figures wrong, uh, too high. So at the moment it says our growth is 44. Uh, but we think that might be a bit low, that it might be actually higher because our last grass wedge said there was more grass than there actually was. So uh, that's just a little uh, error we're having at the moment. See some of the two, uh, the bars are wider than others and that's to do with the size of the paddock. The narrow ones are smaller paddocks and the wider ones are bigger paddocks. So down the bottom then we have our farm cover, cover per livestock unit, growth demand and our stocking rate on the platform. All of our paddocks are numbered and we like to put labels on the gaps going into them so it's easy to identify the fields for if someone starts working with you and they're not familiar with the fields or for contractors and that if you're sending out in the farm to mow a paddock or, or whatever uh, it's easy to just tell them the number and they'll see it on the gap. Paddocks on the land that we own I have numbered with yellow numbers these fields I'm over here now are uh, uh, leased ground. These fields are, are have letters and numbers, so they're all of the, this ground that is leased is known as M, so there's M1, M2, M3, and so on. And we have more ground that's a, a different lease, that's B, it's B1, B2, B3. And the letters are just to do with uh, what we refer to the land of who owned them. After making up more labels for some of these paddocks that aren't labeled yet, and uh, I put these lease ground paddocks in green, just for the fun of it. To make the labels, I just get a coloured piece of paper and I get a permanent marker and write on the number and then I laminate them. And I make sure there's a nice border of laminate around the edges so that I can drive a nail through them onto the posts. If you drive a nail straight through where the paper is, uh, water can seep in and uh, destroy the paper. I use these nails, they're 20 by 3 millimeters, so they're nice and short and then they have a big face on the front of them so that the laminate doesn't crack off easily. Just 
just talk about our paddock layout. We try to have as many gaps going into paddocks as we can because when ground conditions are wet you don't want um, cows or machinery going in and out the same gap and making it muddy. You, uh, with having many gaps you can send cows in one gap and take them out a separate one so that they are not uh, mucking up the ground around the gap. Over here these fields you can see we have a track between these two paddocks. This is just a simple way that Dad came up with making the uh, gaps so we can have a gap at every si between every single post. So you can see he has a bit of low tensile wire running from one pole to the other. And it comes around, loops around the pole through a bit of a half inch pipe. And then it loops around itself. And then the extension comes out and creates a hook at the end to, to carry the current across. And then putting a small bit of half inch pipe on it so that you can disconnect the current and you can just slip off the top of the pole to open the gap. Of course every paddock have to ha has to have a water source for drinking water for the cows so we have a water pipe underneath the ground place which carries water to a water trough. Place the water troughs out in the middle of the fields. This way it's a uh, easy for the cows to access and cows can stand all the way around it. If it's up against a ditch, you can only have half the amount of cows at the water trough. It's in a corner or at the side of, of the paddock. Uh, the cows have to work, walk further to the water trough, especially if it's a big paddock. Also, if it comes, up to, it comes to dividing the paddock, uh, if you're putting up a wire, having it in the middle makes it easier. You can divide it more ways. See here, our water troughs are top filling. These water troughs can be bottom fill as well, but we like to have them filling in at the top as it makes it much easier to work with it when something goes wrong. So the pipe is buried under the ground, it comes straight out of the ground here, and we have driven a stake here to stop the cows scratching against the joiner. There's also a tap on the back of the water trough so we can turn off the water in the winter. There is also a bung here that we can hit in to let the water out. So during the winter after our last rotation we'll let the water out of all the water troughs just to make sure that they don't freeze over the winter and crack the water trough. We have at least one water trough in every paddock. We try to have those big water troughs. I think they're about 500 gallons or about a thousand or about 2,000 2, litres, I think. Um, maybe a little bit smaller. But they're quite big, but for our herd size, um, it, you need the big the big water troughs. Ideally on a dairy farm, you want your paddock size to be big enough to hold uh, for 24 hour grazing. So have enough grass on the paddock for to feed the cows for 24 hours. And some people would like to have up to 36 hour grazings at times and then you can split the paddock. You can just put up wires if you want to have a 12 hour grazing. On our farm, our farm has grown since back, back in the 2000s. They were milking about 120 cows here. This was two paddocks there and this was two paddocks. But we have amalgamated a lot of the fields now to make the paddock size bigger. But we are kind of restricted with uh, not able to make our paddocks big because we have a lot of hedgerows and, and open dikes which are usually beside hedgerows on our farm don't allow us to make paddocks as big as we would like so our paddocks can can vary where these fields I'm standing now are this whole area is quite open um, but you go over to your side of the farm there becomes a lot more hedgerows and we have nine and a half kilometers of hedgerows on the farm so it does divide up the fields a lot there's probably around 50 paddocks or fields on our farm uh, in total. So obviously when we're, we're uh, working with the land and with nature, so um, we kind of just do the best we can with, with the way we graze the paddocks and uh, we, because our paddock size is quite small for our herd size. The size of our paddocks, off the top of my head, maybe three hectares. Uh, and ideally we would really want them five or six hectares um, for our herd size. I think that's going to be all for today's video guys, I've had a few questions before asking to do a video on how we measure grass and our paddock layout and size and all that so I hope I've covered everything there, if you've got any questions fire them in the comments and I'll, I'll answer them because I've probably left some stuff out. 
and I do have something ordered that is coming I'm very excited about that would be great to have in this video uh, to give you a better idea of how the paddocks uh, look um, but I don't have it yet and I'm going to probably just get this video out before it arrives but that will be coming up I hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a like and make sure you're subscribed thanks for watching guys see you in the next one